Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Mafia and Gangsters video. Thought I would mix one of these in as I'm going through the Ghosts and Spirits videos only because I haven't done one of these in a couple of months since early August to be specific. So, so those are, some of you have been asking about these videos already so decided I would go ahead and do one of them for you. Just another random entry, another random item that I found on the website involving the fullwiki.org. This one also has to do with a gangster that was there in Las Vegas during the time of Tony Spilatro and in fact his his persona was uh, placed within the film Casino as well so quite interesting that I was able to come across this just like I did last time when I was talking about uh, Larry Lurch Newman there when I was visiting certain spots there in Las Vegas that were infamous for Mafia ties and it has to do with this you're looking at him now he went by the name Joseph John Aupa but as always, they go by these nicknames, so he was known as Joey Doves. So let's go ahead and let's talk about this information associated with this gangster. So who was this Joey Doves? Well, he was a mobster who ultimately ended up being in the Chicago outfit, which at the time I believe was the largest outfit there in the United States. The ones that actually ran a lot of places outside of Chicago, including the aforementioned Las Vegas. He was born in 1907 and then sometime in 1920s or so so that would have placed him in his 20s maybe he rose or started out in the in the mafia world and then uh, basically as a driver for one of the leaders there of the Chicago outfit and then little by little he just started rising up within the ranks he kind of I guess you could say he started off at a good place because he was a driver for Tony Arcardo who ended up being one of the main bosses within the Chicago outfit. So if you're the driver for one of the main bosses, then you're definitely in a privileged position to essentially rise as well. And then there he was for the next few decades, just essentially doing the usual stuff associated with the world of gangsters, including, in this case, setting up gambling establishments, uh, operating items for them, underground casinos. They even had bookmaking items, secret entrances were also there. He was even involved with a company that he managed called Taylor and Company, which actually was a front for the setup of, in this case, illegal slot machines. So basically his hands were in everything, anything and everything that could be, in, in most cases, considered illegal. He was doing that for the business. And the way he actually ended up getting the name Joey Doves comes from this. So as is usual and frustratingly so, in the world of the mafia it seems like unless you catch these guys right there on video doing what they're doing and even then they can appeal it for years on end he was caught in a very small way and put to jail for something that's just totally nondescript in this case he was uh, basically uh, found in his car like he was driving along some highway out of state and then they found he was pulled over in his car uh, a couple of hundred of these frozen doves. These are apparently called morning doves. Don't know exactly if they were going to be unfrozen afterward or who knows whatever the case was, but in that state it was illegal to carry more than 24 doves at a time because at that point then you're going beyond something just for hunting purposes you're doing something else I guess more commercial but then you would have to have specific I guess licenses for it something along those lines here in this case though he absolutely had several hundred of them 563 to be specific so the government finally had something that they could tie to him when I mentioned that it was frustrating because all those years that I was mentioning earlier all the bookmaking stuff the underground casinos the illegal slot machines that he was making all those gambling establishments you would think all of that stuff would eventually be able to trace to him but no they didn't instead something as nondescript as this frozen doves in his car finally got him in jail but even then after several years in this case after uh, 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 basically fighting over three separate appeals he finally got a sentence of three months three months can you believe that three months in jail and a thousand dollar fine so that was at that time the closest he had been to jail but afterward he still rose up in the ranks um, eventually he became 
what was known as the day-to-day -day boss of the outfit. I guess, I don't know if you could call that like the underboss, but more maybe on the lines of like the operational boss, the one who would make sure that things move along like if, if if the machine is filled with a bunch of cogs then in this case he's making sure that the cogs move within the machine itself and he was also in there within the organization involving several killings including a guy by the name of Giancani, uh, Sam Giancani if I'm not mistaken and then also um, uh, someone else, a guy by the name of Johnny Handsome Roselli so who knows but eventually he was cons uh, he was allegedly conspired to be in on those killings. Now where he ties into the world of Las Vegas has to do with this. If you've ever seen the movie Casino and I'm sure you have you saw how wonderfully it portrayed uh, the history of the mafia there in Las Vegas and how they were there to make sure that the casinos are making money because they in turn would skim money off of the casinos as they famously put in the movie they were there to skim the skim and that way they could collect their own money but he was able to do so and he was able to do so quite well uh, it seems like uh, the way that this that the information read he did this all the way up until 1986 so so if the movie of Casino, I think it took place in the 60s or 70s, somewhere around there, if, if they could do that all that time for several decades, they did it well, then it goes to show how uh, good of an operational guy I guess this guy was. He was there working with Tony DeAnspilatro, his brother Michael as well. They were all there making sure again that the money was being taken from the top and then being sent back to the outfit. Eventually, of course, it all just imploded on each other. Uh, everything just self-imploded. And he is surmised that he's the one that actually helped order the execution of Tony the Spilatro there in the cornfield. Although, if 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 uh, if you went on the tour like I did, you would know that he wasn't actually killed out there in the cornfield. Instead, he was murdered within one of the uh, basements from some of the other, I guess, outfit locations, and then taken across there to the cornfield. And where he ties in into the movie Casino. If you're looking at this guy now, the character that was in the movie, Remo Gaji, that's him, or loosely based on him, on this guy, uh, 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 Joey Doves. So it's him and his persona being placed within the movie. There's that famous scene where where they're kind of like going back and forth on, on who they should kill, and then it uh, finally ends on him, and then something on the lines where he's stating, uh, you know, better safe than sorry, something like something like that when it comes to killing someone outright. But yes, if you next time you see the movie Casino and you see that character, keep in mind that you're looking at the personification of Joey does but it all ended in 1986 eventually he was found um, in this case guilty of all those skimming profits and he was sentenced to 28 years in prison 1986 if he was born 1907 that means that he was well into his 80s but he ended up actually getting released about 10 years later that's pretty crazy when it comes to that world uh, because uh, you would think that 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 he would be pretty much out there for life considering the millions of dollars uh, the hundreds of millions that they were able to get away with uh, but no he was able to get out within 10 years 1996 and then he ended up dying of natural causes less than one year later so for all intents and purposes he ended up living since 1920s up until 1986 a good 60 years or so of his life in the mafia and then finally getting convicted from the skimming profits and then just being released a short while later, 10 years later or so, not dying in prison in this case like some of the other uh, prisoners or some of the other gangsters did out there. But that's it. That's pretty much all the info associated with this Joey Doves. If anybody has any more info, something I might have missed, please place those comments below i love reading about this kind of stuff this little trivia which which image which just simply adds more stuff afterward when i watch the movie casino kind of like the other last time when i was doing the video on larry lurch newman and then his role within tony spolatro's hole in the wall gang here in this case here's yet another character in this case the personification of remo ganji and and, and joey doves basically fulfilling that role so that'll keep uh, things in mind for me whenever i watch the movie next Next time and I realized there he was that's Joey Doves right there as well so all right everybody thanks again as always take care